let's go now to our friend Bimnet Abibi from Galaxy Trading. As always, Bimnet, welcome to Galaxy Brains. Thanks for having me. I am still in Hong Kong and uh, not back in the States, but a lot has happened. It's actually been a very eventful week in, in Bitcoin markets. Um, let, let's start with the SEC's approval of ETF options, Bimnet. Uh, what's your take? When's it going to happen? Why does it matter? You know, it's, it's a little unclear about when it's going to happen, uh, but it was a step in the right direction. Uh, you needed the SEC to approve it. And the subsequent steps are, uh, you know, the CFTC needs to approve it. And I think the OCC uh, as well. Uh, but now, you know, there, there's a, a more believable pathway uh, to getting a, a Bitcoin ETF. Uh, I think in terms of what it means for the space, uh, it means continued uh, institutional and, and retail adoption. Uh, if you look at some of the, the volumes on crypto equities uh, in terms of options volumes, uh, they're, they're very significant. Um, and that's because, you know, partially because folks haven't had the ability uh, to purchase uh, options on, on, on Bitcoin directly. Uh, and so I, I do think that folks will, um, you know, use this product. Folks are very sophisticated these days um, and so are institutions. And so I think it's just a, another pathway uh, for, for liquidity. Um, tough to, uh, you know, estimate, you know, what kind of impact it will have on, on price. Uh, but in theory, it should mean that folks will get more comfortable with, with Bitcoin because it's another avenue for hedging. It's another avenue for, for generating yield. Uh, in addition, uh, your counterparty on 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 the calls is is the uh, clearinghouse, right? And so there, there's no credit risk on 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 these Bitcoin options versus you know say facing uh, an offshore exchange or a counterparty directly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it should bring uh, more adoption, more trust uh, into the space. And you know that's sort of basically what's been happening from from the moment the, these Bitcoin ETFs have been approved. Uh, we've seen. Uh, continued kind of uh, adoption of, of Bitcoin as, as an acceptable form of collateral uh, to, to lend against uh, rates, you know, generally have been uh, softening uh, as kind of the credit premium and the rate uh, comp component of it, you know, have, have both moved, been moving in, in, in the right direction. Uh, and so, you know, it's a very uh, positive sort of a, event, you know, that, that, that came out of the last Friday's uh, announcement. You also had the loose of, of SAB 121 uh, regulations, uh, you know, for, for for banks in terms of you know uh, custodying uh, Bitcoin on, on on their balance sheet, um, and so you know, and then you've also had some positive re rhetoric uh, with respect to uh, what the Harris administration is going to do with re respect to crypto policy. I think Mark Cuban was on Twitter uh, yesterday saying that uh, they you know aren't the Harris uh, uh, campaign uh, slash presidency uh, will not pursue uh, a, a, a regulation by uh, enforcement uh, sort, sort, sort of policy and that Gensler was, is out is kind of what, what Cuban uh, was saying. And so you're having uh, a bunch of constructive narratives forming uh, around Bitcoin um, and that should, uh, you know, be very good. And then when you couple that with a very strong macro background, ma macro backdrop with gold trading at all time highs with, you know, silver having a, a 5% plus day yesterday and at trend highs with, you know, S&P at all time highs um, and NASDAQ, you know, trading well with, you know, China injecting stimulus in, into the economy uh, with, uh, you know, just the broader turn you've had in, in monetary policy o over the past couple of months. You know, European data has been softening. They're expected to cut further. Bank of Canada is going to be cutting uh, by, by 50. Uh, and so there, there's there's just a lot of, you know, constructive uh, tailwinds uh, from from the, the macro and the liquidity side, side of things, uh, as well as, you know, the, the regulatory and, and structural yeah. uh, dynamics. And so, you know, I really do think that Q4 is going to be a a very strong quarter for Bitcoin. Uh, and, you know, when you couple that with uh, FTX distributions that are likely going to happen uh, at some point in the next couple of quarters, uh, you know, you should really have uh, kind of the, the catalysts uh, and, 
you know, the the, the momentum for, for push beyond all time highs o- over the next quarter or so. We're back. It sounds like we've got a bullish BIM net. Absolutely. We've got a bullish BIM net on the mic. He's, it's hot on the mic. Um, I saw that, um, you know, we've been covering the. I wish I could rap like <laughs> you, but, you know. We've been covering the SAB 121 story for a long time. And and I wrote about the uh, 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 the the easing, the apparent offering of exemption to some entity, some state regulated bank. Uh, we all thought it was BNY Mellon. And now it looks like this week BNY has said it was them. Uh, how big in your mind is is BNY? If BNY is about to start being able to offer Bitcoin custody to institutions, say to ETFs, how big is their entrance in your mind? Is that, you know, why is that better than the other custodians that we have? Boney is basically a quasi government entity. By that I mean they custody over ninety percent of U.S. Treasuries, and. The bony uh, payment rails and bony tri-party uh, is how money and treasuries move across the entirety of, of sort of U.S. banked, uh, the U.S. banking system. And so when you have the largest custodian and the most trusted custodian of, you know, U.S. government securities, which are the risk-free securities in, in, in the entire world, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. Uh, and that's only going to spur, you know, further adoption, uh, by, by, by folks. And, you know, it's, it's, it's meaningful in the sense that, you know, the, the SEC is, you know, not fighting the, the banks on this stuff. It allows them to hold it on their balance sheet without a really punitive, you know, capital charge. It allows them to, to provide services. And so, uh, it's, it's very meaningful and, you know, I think in terms of kind of the the precedent it sets, that means, you know, other banks are, are going to seek, you know, the exemption and try to try to do the, the same thing. And that will lead to just a lot more U.S. institutions trying to play uh, in the same game because, you know, right now, uh, Boney doesn't custody any Bitcoin, right? Or whatever it does, it may, it may be minimal, but that's looks like market share that another bank can possibly right. gain. Right. And so all of these banks are going are to try to compete in that space. But from a market confidence perspective, right, there is no better name than Boney in terms of a, a gold standard for, mm-hmm. for custody of, of securities. Bank of New York founded by founded by Alexander Hamilton himself. Oldest bank in America. You know, you could argue that J.P. Morgan is is more systemically important than than Boney, but I I, I personally, having come from you know a, a treasury and, and repo background, there is nothing more systemically important than Boney and and their rails. Uh, and so, from just uh, when you think about what Bitcoin is as as, as a form of pristine collateral uh, that is has the utmost confidence of, of market participants in terms of, you know, that asset being theirs at all times. And there's no risk of, you know, custodian going down, et cetera. Like it gives me the highest level of confidence possible in theory. Uh, and so, you know, not knowing anything about their custody technology, just knowing, you know, who Boney is and what they've done for, for the, the treasury market. Uh, and so I, I really think that it's a, it's a very, uh, it's a giant leap uh, is, is kind of what, what I would call it. Uh, and I don't think that's a, a, an over exaggeration. Yeah. It, it's so interesting. SAB 121, uh, the accounting rule that required public companies from the SEC to um, carry client held digital assets on their balance sheets and BNY apparently getting an exemption from that. Uh, right. Um, it, it seems, does seem like a very big deal. I, I wonder if there will be others that can get through with an exemption as well. You mentioned JP, I mean, as an example, Jamie Dimon, no fan of Bitcoin, uh, but they've done a bunch of blockchain stuff. You have to assume that if BNY is successful uh, and attracts a large amount of, of, of deposits, Bitcoin deposits uh, from the ETFs or from institutions that yeah. this could open a floodgate and and maybe the, the national banks like JPM or Citi or, or GS would be, you know, sort of trying to position here too. No, absolutely. At the end of the day, custody is, does make fees, right? It's, so it's, it's another profit center. So I don't know why another bank is not going to pursue that opportunity just from a, like, you know, 
cost and, and, and revenue perspective. And then the other thing to think about, though, is like, where does the, the lending market go for, for, for Bitcoin, right? It ends up becoming, over time, viewed as a GC asset. By GC, I mean general collateral. By general collateral, I mean an asset that can be converted to cash or a cash equivalent with relatively minimal slippage and a very small haircut, right? And so if you get to a world where Bitcoin is easily convertible uh, into uh, cash, right, it becomes one of those things that is uh, a, a medium of exchange because you can easily get cash for it and transact in it, and you don't actually have to sell the asset to do mm -hmm. that, that, that transaction. Uh, and it becomes a, a great store of value because the the Bitcoin itself as collateral will actually have a value, right? Because you can always generate cash versus it. And so this is almost like the, the ultimate, like, you know, uh, end game for, for Bitcoin in the sense that, you know, when you think about it being a store of value and a medium of exchange, giving, uh, Bitcoin open access to, to TradFi, you know, lending markets and TradFi custody, right, gives it that value as collateral, right? Whereas before, you know, it, 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 the use cases were, were very limited and the, the U.S. nexus component was, was very limited, but now it, it's much more open. And so, uh, you know, fundamentally, I, I, I think just when you start pricing in the fact that you know, Bitcoin has value as inherent collateral right now, and it's going to go become usable in, in TradFi rails, right? Like the, the value proposition gets that mm -hmm, much better mm -hmm. uh, in my eyes. Brilliant. I love it. Uh, BIMnet, I will see you in New York soon. I'll be back. Uh, thank you as always for coming on Galaxy Brains, my friend. Pleasure. Thank you for having me.